call the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the month of August to order. The board that is with us tonight is our regular five members. Member Steve Lianus, Monique Screenberry, Fire Chief Brian Nardelli, James Sweeney, and myself, Chair Kenneth Galligan. Our Zoning Enforcement Officer tonight is Mr. James Plouffe. Our Recording Secretary is Monica Fagazzo. And the way the meeting will operate, I will briefly explain. I would request that anybody that's got an electronic device, a telephone or whatever, if you're going to use it or listen to it in the auditorium, please put it on silence, mute it, shut it off. If you need to use the phone, please go out in the corridor if you need to talk on the phone. This meeting is being televised. It is live on Brockton Cable TV, and it is also being recorded on Brockton Cable TV. Prior to the start of tonight's hearing, is there anyone that wants to withdraw from the hearing prior to the start of the hearing? We have five cases tonight, and nobody is withdrawing. The way the petitions will be presented tonight is that when I call the hearing, the petitioner will come up to the podium the petitioner will present the case to the board. When the petitioner has finished uh, presenting the case to the board, I will then ask if the board members have any questions on the testimony that was just given. If there are none, or when that part has completed, I will close that portion of the hearing, and I will then open it up for public discussion. Traditionally, I ask if anybody is here that wants to speak in favor, you can come up to the podium, give your name and address, and say whatever you want to say in favor. When that part is done, I'll ask if there's anyone here that wants to speak in opposition. Same thing, come up, give your name, address, explain to us why you're in opposition. Thirdly, if you have any questions about what is transpiring as far as the hearing is concerned, uh, I will allow you to ask any questions that may, you may have uh, about what the hearing is all about. Lastly, I'll ask if there's any elected officials in the room that want to be heard on the issue. Once that is done, the public discussion portion of the hearing is closed. I will then open it up for discussion among the board members. This is the point in the meeting where the board members will discuss among themselves what the status is of the variance or the special permit that's being asked for. You will then usually hear one of the board members make a motion to grant. If that motion to grant is seconded, I will then call for the clerk to call a roll call vote. Every vote is recorded, and at the end of the vote, the clerk will announce to me what the vote is. I will then announce that to everyone that's in the chamber, and I will tell you whether or not your petition has been granted or it has been denied. In order for a petition to pass, if there are five affirmative votes, the petition will be granted. If there are four affirmative votes and one negative vote, the petition will be granted. Anything less than that, it is denied. A three to two vote does not carry. So you need at least four affirmative votes in order for a petition to pass. All right, board members, we ready? All right, the first petition tonight is petition 23-33, the petition of Luke Hancock, 12, Yarmouth Avenue, Brockton, Mass., for a variance seeking relief from Section 27-9, side yard sec re setback requirements in an R1C zone located at 12 Yarmouth Avenue. Is there anyone here for that? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. My name is David Tamayo. The company is Home Restoration Spe uh, Specialist Company. What is uh, the name again? It's David Tamaro. Tamaro. Yeah, T-A-M-M-A-R-O. Uh, the company is Home Restoration Specialist Company, and Luke and Kristen asked me to appear here with them today. I am the actual designer and builder on the, on the proposed project. They asked me to come here just to explain where we're at with the project and what we're looking to do. Um, we, um, we started with, the, they're, they're a young family, they're, they're teachers at Brockton High School, they're rooted here, they want to expand their family and, and, uh, and therefore expand their home. So 
They already have a permit pulled. They're working on uh, expanding uh, their basement as a, as a uh, uh, family room and living space. And they want to add a uh, two-car garage, and that's what the issue is today. Uh, that two-car garage, we originally wanted to put it on the right side of the house. If you're looking at the plot plan, you can see it there on the right side of the house. We discovered that it would be in violation of the setbacks. It would be non-conforming. Um, so we explored going on the other side of the house, and uh, it's actually tight in there. Um, we, were, we, we tried it a couple different ways. We were going to kind of angle it back, uh, move it towards the back of the house. Um, and uh, it, it kind of worked, but we would have to reduce the doors down and reduce the size. It wouldn't have really been viable. Uh, I came up with this radical idea, if you will, um, to put a garage, a single garage, on each side of the home because the, the, um, the kitchen is going to be expanded across the entire back of the home and it would be, it would be viable to put two doors in there. Um, when I came up with that idea, as I was, as I was formulating it, and, and I actually have renderings of that if the board would like to see it, um, it actually came out pretty good. Um, when we actually explored that, Luke informed me that there was a, um, uh, an easement on that side of the house. So I went back to Fieldstone Survey, who actually did the plot plan, and uh, had him explore that. And that easement actually extends to within like a foot of the house, and it goes all the way back. It's a sewer easement. Uh, so it kind of vacated the possibility of doing that, that one garage on each side and created a little hardship over there. So the only viable place that we have that we can actually accomplish this project is on the right side of, of the home um, where the existing driveway is, but it does uh, in, in fact violate uh, or, or exceed this, the setback. So that's what they're looking for at this point in time is relief from that potential hardship on, on, the, uh, on the other side of the house that prevents them from doing pretty much anything that would stay within the setbacks. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. How far from the property line will the garage be? I'm sorry? How far from the property line? Would the garage be at completion? Yes. About three and a half feet. Three and a half feet. And we've already discussed that there'd be no uh, windows on that side of the garage. Uh, those houses are pretty tightly packed in there uh, as it is. Um, and it would, it, there'd be no violation of the setbacks, the front setbacks. Uh, we, we made all those. The only issue is with the side. So the hardship you're looking for is uh, 27.9 relative to the side yard setback that needs to be 15 feet? Yes, correct. Okay. Can you speak to the hardship relative to that setback on that side of the house? We understand that there's a hardship because of the sewer easement. What is the hardship where the garage is proposed to go? Uh, there is no hardship except for the setback on, on that side of the, of the dwelling. Um, the, the hardship that we're discussing is because it prevents them, because we could actually put a single car garage on either side of the house. But because of the easement on the left side, we can't accomplish that, so it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, it prevents us from putting what would be a two-car garage. Did I answer that correctly? Is that what, the, what yeah. you asked? So you're telling us that as an option, without zoning board approval, you could put a single car garage in there? We could put a single garage, a uh, single car garage in there. Yes. Is there any other option towards the rear of the house where you could put a two car garage? Um, Luke, do you want to you want to speak to that? There are a couple of issues there. Uh, the homeowner, Mr. Uh, sure. Uh, actually, Luke, <laughs> we'll discuss that. Thank you. Yep. So I'm um, Luke Hancock, the uh, homeowner of 12 Yarmouth Ave. So a couple of the issues with the back would be one, we do have a well that would in ch we would be ch chipping into the well line, which that could present an issue with that. But also what we'd be looking into, we would take out a decent area of our backyard. And as, uh, as a new family wanting to have kids one day, you want your kids playing in the backyard, well, unfortunately, outside of our yard on the backyard side is commercial property. So, although as you see on the plot plan, the backyard does extend quite far, a lot of that is currently wooded area. Now, if we put the garage in that area, we would then probably look to clear some trees in that lower backyard, which would then reduce the privacy into that between our family and that commercial area. Um, We've already unfortunately lost a couple of trees in that area due to weather, 
um, over the course of the eight years that I've owned the home. Um, another issue that we could run into currently the commercial property that we abut to, uh, they have a fence as do we. Um, they have a wooden fence there, which has also taken damage from these storms and many sections of it currently are broken or just completely gone. So there's a direct sight line from that commercial property into our backyard as it stands now. Um, so in doing so, putting the garage in the back, taking out more trees so the kids can you know, utilize a backyard in the future, that would pretty much completely get rid of any kind of privacy between our residents and the commercial property, um, which was the old stop and shop, um, as well as the uh, sh small strip mall behind the McDonald's in that area right off of Belmont Street. That's where our backyard butts up to. Uh, any further questions with regard to the backyard? The well that you talk about, is that a shallow well or a deep well? Um, that I cannot speak to at this time. Absolutely. Just wanted to add something uh, further for the board is uh, they were also proposing to put a deck out there um, and putting a garage on the back would not only <coughs> eliminate all of the windows for the back of the house and the kitchen, but they would pr preclude them from uh, uh, being able to install a back deck because uh, part of the plan was to put a slider out there and put a back deck. It would also force the play area for the kids would then be behind the garage, more towards that commercial property. Um, and uh, I, I had mentioned that to them because now you're pushing the backyard another 24 feet back. Um, and guys, I gotta tell you, if it was my family, I'd be concerned about that, about putting my kids behind a garage as a play area, especially with a young family. So I just wanted to mention that from a, uh, the, the issues from a building standpoint. Very good, thank you. Board members, any other questions? Very good. All right, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone that has any comment relative to the issue? Seeing none, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Is there any elected official that wants to be heard on the issue? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. That concludes the public hearing. I am now going to close that portion of the hearing and open it up for discussion among the board members. Board well, members. I think this is a similar uh, instance as to uh, two, two uh, sessions ago where the, the neighborhood is dense. Uh, this one has a little unique piece where it does abut a commercial property. So we like to see uh, homeowners go to the back, however, where this is unique and it, and it abuts commercial. Um, we, we know that, you know, there's some activity that goes on behind that property and also having a family and, and, and that's, that makes sense. You wouldn't want to, you know, block your sight line. Um, it, is, it is a little tighter on that uh, side, but it's not something we haven't seen in a neighborhood of that, uh, you know, of likeness, so. It does only leave three feet, three and a half feet. Did you speak up just a little louder? I, I was just saying it does leave only three and a half feet. It's very, very tight, you know, if it's built to that. Did the, could we ask the partitioner, did they speak to the neighbor? Did you speak to that neighbor on that side? If that's all right, Mr. Chair? Yeah. There's no neighbor here. Okay. Oh. Yes, um, our current neighbor, Celeste, she, um, uh, lives there by herself, older woman. Um, she moved in about two or three years ago, roughly. She's the third neighbor I've had since I've lived at the property mm -hmm. since 2015. Um, very, you know, friendly relationship. Don't see each other too much, kind of keep to ourselves, you know, as far as that, don't see her out too much. Um, and as far as at the property line, there is a wooden fence there. So from a privacy standpoint, and as Dave already spoke to, we would not be even considering putting a window on that side of the property line. Um, but if, and yeah, there's only, I believe one window from her property that faces that same property line. So as far as, you know, 
okay. that I, standpoint. I, I have extended a courtesy to allow you to talk, but that portion of the hearing has been completed. Of course. So we're Thank you. basing our information on what was presented. Also, I noticed on here that there's a uh, second floor that's going to be added to this house. Uh, I believe the garage looks like that's going to remain one story, but there's apparently a second floor that's going to be added to um, the current dwelling. I guess my question would be from a, the fire department standing, do you see any issue from it, Chief? As far as the, it's close to the other house, right? I mean, obviously there's an exposure issue because it is, it's close to that lot line and it's close to the other house. I mean, because of the, be, be, I think the zoning there, that's why the setbacks are set the way they are. So I think what we have to keep in mind also is if we're gonna grant a variance on this, this variance is gonna be in perpetuity with this location. So even though you may have two neighbors that are very friendly uh, five years from now, things could be altogether different. Mm -hmm. So we're not voting on uh, the neighbor that's next door. It's not, that neighbor is not here, so there's no issue there. But we're voting on something that is going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. Motion to grant. You got a second? Motion has been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Lamus? Yes. Chief Nardelli? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Ms. Screenberry? Yes. Chair Galligan? No. Mr. Chair, that's four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The vote is four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The petition is granted. The next petition is 2334, the petition of Wisney McKeju and Stilet Phileas, 16 Fortin Drive, Rockland, Mass, for a variance seeking relief from section 27.9 side yard setback requirements in an I1C zone located at 16 Fortin Drive. Please identify yourself. Good evening, my name is Wisney McKeju and my wife's name. Stilet Phileas. So since 2019, we bought a house at 16 Fortin Drive. When we went there, uh, the kitchen with the dining room was together. So we had planned to convert the deck to the kitchen and to remove the existing kitchen. Uh, when we call a uh, architect, he told us to hire, to hire and, and learn surveyor. We did that. And then after that, the, the architect come and then he, he did the design for us. After that, we call a, a constructor and then he pulled a permit for us. We got the permit and then start the job. At the, foundation, at the foundation, when the inspector come, when the inspector came, he says they have some little issues, but they can continue the job and then pull another, another uh, survey because they are a problem in the first one. We do that. And then I take, he said to the constructor to continue the job. And then when we continue, uh, to the frame when he came and then he, he stopped the job, say we have to come here to the zoning process. So you hired a contractor to put this addition on? Yeah. Yes. And at some point during the inspection process, it was discovered that you were within the boundary? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, excuse me, my voice, I'm kind of mm -hmm. like. A problem with my voice. Sorry, I have a little allergy. Um, when we when we when we had when we hired the constructor, he get the permit from the city wall. 
And when he came for the foundation, he told, the, I, I think he told the constructor that there's a little mistake. Um, I think it was too close to the property line, but you can continue the job. That's what the constructor said. I don't know if it's true or not. And then he finished the foundation, the plumbing came, inspected for the plumbing, they passed, electricity passed, and then the same guy that came for the foundation, he came back again, the inspector, for the framing. That's when he said, oh, there's a problem. You guys are too close to the, prop to, to the other property line. You have to stop the job and get a special permit. And then that's when we came here, we do all the paperwork, and then we come to the zoning. Okay, so this addition that you put on the house is already built. Yes, it was a deck we converted to the kitchen, to, um, to a kitchen. This addition that you put on does not have a full foundation? It's on four by fours that are holding it up? Um, he had the foundation, but they say that foundation not too good. They, they're doing what they were at the same place. So you put a new foundation in? Yes. Not us, the constructor, because we don't know nothing about the house. We just hired a constructor. So there was two people here that evidently did surveying work up here. One is this Antonio, and the other one is land surveys. Yes. Antonio. The Antonio one yeah. was done in 2021. Yes. Correct. The Antonio is the first one. The first did the sell, did the, the propeller for us. So that plan that he submitted to you is a slight incursion over onto the setback. It's only over the setback, a short distance, correct? Yeah, but we, the constructor get the special, per, I mean, the permit with this, with this, um, Poplin, not the new one, the old one. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question through you to the building inspector? There was a permit issued for this, but I, I'm just a little confused. Now we're back at zoning because I just, an explanation on how they got a permit and now they don't have a permit, that's all. Certainly, so we issued a permit um, based on a slightly over the line uh, corner of the property. So it was de minimis, it was 13, uh, and change based on the Antonio survey. Okay. When the inspector went out to inspect it, um, he, he inspected it and found out that it fell closer to the property line than what we believed was on the plan. And at the time, instructed the contractor to obtain another survey to confirm the location of it. That survey came back less than 10 feet to the property line. So we're talking a, a difference of about four feet. Uh, for where they told us originally for the building permit. Okay, so they got the building permit. They went over what it was supposed to be well, that came from the building permit, and that's why we're here today. That's correct. It, it wasn't just uh, like the kind of pregnant thing. Are we are we in line or are we not in line? I don't mean to be facetious, but it's just kind of. Yeah, no, no um, it, Chief. It, it was a um, the, the two surveyors are completely different. Gotcha. And the the, the actual survey that came through after the fact showed the real numbers and the first survey was not. Yeah, I guess I just, I needed just some clarification. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. So the other interesting part of this is they applied for a variance when in fact the house was already into the setback. Is that correct? Yes. The main house as it was built was already in the setback. So actually tonight we're looking for a special permit rather than a variance. That is correct, um, Chair. Um, as, as we're aware, variances require a hardship. Special permits do not. So, and this is, would be a special permit situation where a, a hardship would not be required. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the addition was built. It was built within the setback. I guess the, the options here is to perhaps grant a special permit or you could order it removed. Um, that'll be up to the board. There was two different surveys made. Both surveys were in conflict with one another. So they got a dilemma. All right, any other questions from the board members? Everybody's good? Close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? 
Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'm going to ask, is there anyone here that has any questions relative to the issue at hand? You're good up back? Do you have any questions? You're Can you hear me back there? Okay, so you are all set. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, is there any elected official here that wants to be heard on the issue? We have a communication from Councillor Jack Lally in support of granting a special permit for the addition. Seeing no other public officials to report. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'll now open it up for discussion among the board members. Board members. So when I took a ride by this house, I met your neighbor who would be most uh, infringed, I guess, upon. And she didn't have any problems with it either. I know we're not basing it off a neighbor, but um, seemed very nice, didn't have a problem with it. Uh, she was out watering our grass. So that's just, you know, for the sake of the board. My, just my concerns are obviously, you know, I think anybody could come in here and they go to get a building permit and you say X, Y, and Z, and then they build over that by 10 feet or whatever the foot it, like, I, I don't want to see these people tear anything down. That's not the point of this board. I, I, but it is infringing upon the zoning and it is a violation of the zoning. So I just, my, my concern is where do we draw the line here? Where do we, you know, do we, do we say, oh, okay, it's okay for them, but not okay? I mean, that just that's that puts us down a very treacherous road. But that's just me. Well, that's why we're here as an appeal board. I understand, but I just get, I, I get, you know, I, I don't know, you know, th these folks have already put a lot of money into this, I'm sure. So you, you know, <laughs> that tears at your heartstrings, and and I think it's you know you have to remain objective. But I think when you remain objective, is where's that? Where's that line? Obviously, there's folks here that are okay with it. The, the woman next door water on her lawn is okay with it. But I just, um, you know, I think we, we, we have to be careful and, and be careful the treacherous road we walk making decisions like this. That's my only concern. And uh, according to the plan here, it looks like it's maybe less than two feet closer to the line than the house is. It's minimal. Yeah, the addition. It's just it's three feet or? The only other thing that I, I didn't ask that if there's a shed out there in the backyard, that shed cannot no, be within 10 yeah. feet of the house. We don't have a shed. The shed Shed's gone. gone. No, we don't have mm -hmm. Motion to grant. Second. Motion is made. Did somebody second it? Yes, I did. Yep. Motion has been made and seconded to grant all the. Uh, will the clerk please, please call the roll? Mr. Lanis. Yes. Chief Nadelli. No. Mr. Sweeney. Yes. Um, Ms. Screenberry. Yes. Chair Galligan. Yes. Mr. Chair, that is uh, four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The vote is four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The petition is granted. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. The next petition is 23-35, the petition of Michael Bregel, 85, Crabtree Road, Quincy, Mass, for a variance seeking relief from Article 3, Section 27.9 and 27.13a, standards for lot area, frontage, front and rear yard setbacks to construct a single family home in an R1C zone located at Plot 4, Franklin Avenue. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. My name is Chris Vale. I'm here on behalf of the petitioner, Michael Bragel. Uh, as you heard, this is a petition to the board seeking a variance to construct a new single family home on a vacant lot in the city. Uh, the applicant is seeking a variance under Article 3, 27.9 and 13A, uh, in which he's seeking relief from the lot's minimum area, frontage, rear and front setbacks as well as uh, the minimum lot width requirements with the, uh, with the desire to build this single family home. 
Uh, some facts particular about our project is plot four is located at zero Franklin Avenue in which it is a recorded vacant lot of record at the Plymouth Registry of Deeds. It originally was part of 247 Howard Street, uh, but at some point was split and sold as a vacant lot uh, back in 1970. Uh, the subject lot is assessed and taxed as a buildable lot. I attached the MLC, which is being taxed at approximately 1400 a year. Uh, the subject lot is of unique size and shape, thus requiring a variance in order uh, for Mr. Bragle to construct this proposed single family three bedroom house. Uh, the lot is 6,900 square feet, has 54.2 feet of frontage facing Franklin Avenue with ample parking to the left of the home. Uh, the property will meet the right and left side setbacks but will need relief from the front and rear setbacks. Uh, the front setback will have 10.7 out of the 30 feet frontage, however the home We'll have a beautiful front porch uh, that takes up six feet of the frontage setback, uh, but will be aesthetically pleasing to the neighborhood. Uh, in addition, the lot will need relief from the minimum lot width and the rear setback requirements. Uh, that being the rear setback will have 8.8 .8 of the 30 feet requirement due to the unique size and shape of the lot uh, where the proposed 10 foot deck is being proposed from the abutter. Uh, the proposed home will have ample green space in the backyard and the single family house uh, size and style uh, will be in keeping with the other homes in the neighborhood. In regards to our hardship, Zero Franklin Avenue is a vacant lot uh, that is currently taxed as a buildable lot. Although the lot size is similar to others in the neighborhood, it is a very unique shape that makes building any single family home they are impossible without a variance awarded from the board. Uh, so based on all these reasons, we are asking you to uh, grant Mr. Bragle a variance in order to build this. Board members, any questions? Just ex can someone, Mr. Vail, the builder, whomever, can you explain the driveway to me a little bit here? Is that just, how many cars does that fit? Two, two. Yeah, it was a two car driveway that will fit. Right. And like I said, a three bedroom. Yep. It just looks long. I mean, it, maybe I'm just not to scale this, but okay. The hardship is because of the lot size of the, the shape of the lot. That in it being taxed as a buildable lot for all these years, but yes, uh, if if you look at the the shape, it is a unique unique size and shape, going length down wise with the backyard being in the back. Sure, got it. Do you require thirty feet? to the property line and you've got 8.8 .8 feet. However, on the other side of the house, you've got all kinds of distance. That's on the, the back with the, it once again being a unique shape with the deck. Uh, it's 8.8, .8, but as you can see, it goes out further in the back, it's just thinner. But from where his deck would be, it would be 8.8 .8 feet from the, the property on plot 43. Is that what you're asking? Yes, so is there any reason why the house as it is designed was placed on the lot as it is? Was there another option to flip that to put the basement entrance to the left and the deck to the right which would allow you to pull the house back further from the street? I believe if we did that it it wouldn't have fit as nice as what we are proposing. Okay. Uh, I this do. lot was carved out from a lot that was on Howard Street. Is that what the story is here? 243 Howard Street? I believe it was all once a lot at one point, but it was sold to plot 431 and it was part of uh, the number 247 Howard Street, this building right here. 
So that lot went with the corner house originally? This was all one lot, and or it was two separate lots, but they was same owners. He divided it and then sold it as a, a recorded lot. So who sold the lot, the corner house? The Coxes. They were the original owners of that property you we're looking at tonight? Yes, and then they sold it to the Polies. Okay, so the Polies now own this lot on Howard Street and the lot in question? Yes. Okay, so those two lots are under one ownership, but they're two separate lots? Correct. Okay, got it. And both separately recorded. Good mm -hmm. Any questions, any comments? We're good? All right, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. I'm gonna open it up for public discussion. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'm gonna close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Lisa Crowley. I live at 250 Howard Street, across the street from the um, Coxes. Uh, the assessor's record still has the Scullies. That's why my name is not on the abutters list. Um, I submitted a letter, as well as Maggie Cox has submitted a letter. Um, we're not entirely opposed to this, but the information that you've been provided is not accurate. Um, Mr. Poley, the, those, he's owned that since he bought it in 1988. Um, I did a deed search. The Coxes did not own that. Um, Maggie is opposed uh, to the development. That picture does not depict how tight it is in that area. It's very, very tight, very congested. Um, we question whether two cars are even gonna actually fit in there. Um, the other main question is, um, Chairman Galligan mentioned, there's a whole other chunk of that lot that's in the back behind Mr. Poley's house. Can somebody come in and do a special permit and maybe have access to that whole process, to that whole plot? Um, we worry about that a little bit. Um, the backside um, is very, very close. And the big question is whether it's buildable or not. Um, on a document that was submitted as part of the package, it's, the deed search isn't even accurate. Um, if you would continue uh, this process, that would probably be a good thing. Um, I can look these up very quickly. I could not get to the registry of deeds today, um, but Maggie Cox is, and did not own that, that, that lot. It goes back to James and Barbara Driscoll, who bought it from the Quarry Company and it was all together with the, with the Sampsons going back to the 50s and the 60s. It was subdivided, I couldn't find the 70 that you were talking about, that's when the Driscolls kind of pop in, but it doesn't subdivide until around 74, or at least that's the search that I, sh I showed. Um, but it's small and it's congested. We all wanna support Joe Poli in subdividing this. We're all very friendly in the neighborhood. Um, maybe we could go back and redesign it. Um, Chief Nardelli kind of picked out. It doesn't look to scale, because I don't think it is. Um, I've been trying to go over it. We're trying to figure it out. If, if we could have a little bit more time to maybe sort this out, because we do want it to be amicable. Um, but I do question the deed search. I couldn't find any reference to meads and bounds on any of the deed searches going back to um, when Franklin Howard and Minerva Howard had the original plots for that whole section in 1894, 1896. So um, I would be opposed to it just because I think it's not properly planned. Um, and if we could continue it, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, is that yours? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then that too. Right Which ones? That one? Yeah, Are you sure? Okay, I had a bunch of stuff too. Yeah, Thank no you. Problem. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? I have a letter that has been submitted to the board from Maggie Gadboy of 247 Howard Street. I have submitted this email letter to express some of my concerns regarding the application by Mr. 
Michael Bragel's schedule for hearing on August 8th. Having read the documents available online, my first concern is if I receive proper notification regarding the hearing. I received a letter July 28th giving me 10 calendar days and only six to review the documents, research and ordinances, and research the deed history. I requested a copy of the newspaper advertisement via email earlier today. Hopefully a copy will be made available at the hearing if not before. When these are advertised, When these are advertised, they are advertised at least 14 days prior to the hearing in the local newspaper. They are published, or noti the notification is also given at City Hall, and, and a butters list is put together, and notification is sent out to all the abutters. A butters list that goes out is a notification letter. It is not a signed receipt letter, and we have no control over when the uh, post office department may actually make that uh, delivery of that letter. However, uh, she says she has at least ca uh, 10 calendar days, so there was plenty of notification. Secondly, I would like to confirm that this is not a buildable lot, as the form signed by Building Inspector Plouffe on June 28, 2023 seems to indicate that the Building Inspector has determined is that lot is not buildable. If so, I would agree with the Building Inspector Plouffe's determination or request the Zoning Board deny the request from the applicant for the variances requested. Other concerns I have regarding the project include the deck being only 8.8 8 feet, 8 .8 feet from the property line. What will the stormwater management look like during construction? How many number of occupants will be there and how many the parking situation look like with such a small street? On top of that is going to make a very congested living situation. We will have, with our, we, we will have to live with our blinds closed just to have any privacy and we're trying to start a family that's not the kind of life I want to provide for them. I hope to attend the hearing on August 8th, however, I may not be able to due to work commitments, but I would request my email letter be included in the record of the hearing. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. Regards, Maggie Gedboy. And the other letter that we received is from Lisa Crowley, and everything that she talked about tonight is in the letter. So both of those letters are here. All right, is there anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing I'm going to close that portion of the hearing, is there anyone here that has any question regarding the petition? Seeing none, I am going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there any elected official that wants to be heard on the issue? We heard nothing from any official, uh, elected officials, right? No letters from them. Elected officials, we didn't get any. Okay. Uh, I will close that portion of the hearing and the public discussion is closed and now I will open it up for discussion among the board members. Board members. I mean, it seems to be consistent with the other houses in the neighborhood. Uh, everything else there um, looks pretty tight to the property lines. I don't have an issue with this. Well, we're granting a variance, so just keep in mind the requirements of the variance. I would, I would agree with you, Steve. Um, it does. If anything was questionable, it would be the deck and maybe the deck size. Um, There's no discussion. The board will entertain a motion. Motion to grant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Lanis. Yes. Chief Nardelli. Yes. Mr. Sweeney. Yes. Ms. Screenberry. Yes. Chair Galligan. No. Mr. Chair, that's four in the affirmative, one in the negative. Vote is four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The petition is granted. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.
The next petition is 2336, the petition of OM Psi Properties, LLC, 601 Pleasant Street, Brockton, Mass. For a variance, seeking relief from Article 3, Section 2724, Subsection 2A, for relief from the city setback for vegetative screening when abutting a park in a C5 zone located at 609 and 627 Pleasant Street. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Clerk. <clears throat> Attorney John McCluskey representing the petitioner, Dr. Malik, uh, who is right here. Uh, Dr. Malik runs a, uh, his dental practice at 601 Pleasant Street, which is pretty much just adjacent to across the street, Pennsylvania Ave, from the property in question. <clears throat> this, I think, is the fourth time I've been before the board on this property. Uh, most of the time favorably, uh, one time it ended up in court when they appealed uh, a, a variance uh, petition, which this board allowed. <clears throat> On each occasion, the, there's only one remaining issue. So this property is, consists of two parcels, one here and here. <clears throat> it abuts Pennsylvania Ave uh, on the, on the uh, east, and it, on, it is on Pleasant Street, uh, not too far from west. You're probably quite familiar with this. This was formerly a real estate um, office, um, uh, Nezzarella and, um, uh, I forget it's, uh, Freddie. Hepshi. <laughs> Hepshi. <laughs> and uh, so the building is gone right now. It's been uh, raised. And um, it's in a C5 zone. And in a C5 zone, you can do by right dental work, uh, lawyers, accountants, um, office type work and, and uh, serving the public. So Dr. Malik has a small office down the street here. He'd like to move his practice, which is Ace Dental, up here and he wants to create uh, several units, including his own, where he'll have his dental practice, perhaps there'll be a dental lab, um, maybe an orthodontist, that type of practice. And he can do the, all of that by right. The only thing that we're asking this board to do is to give us relief from a, an ordinance in favor of the park commission because we abut Fields Park on two, uh, on two sides. This is an old entrance into Fields Park, which I think has been abandoned. <coughs> and then this is the back, which goes out towards Fields Park. The ordinance says that you must have 100 foot of vegetation abut when abutting a park. Or if you put in dense veg vegetation, you can go down to 50 feet. So the, this lot was here prior to the enactment of the ordinance. But what that ordinance does, if you strictly enforce it, takes away the, the whole use of the property. 100 feet from the park would bring your, bringing it down to about here and on this side would bring, bring you over to here. So that really would take up most of the park. 50 feet would bring you about to the middle or beyond on this building. So the line would go up here and roughly over here. So the only usable part would be this. And that makes it sort of unusable. Um, so as and, and we've had this issue before the board on, on two prior occasions, both of uh, which were approved, uh, the variance was approved. Recently in June, uh, Dr. Malik met with um, the Park Commission. Mr. Chairman, have you, did you receive uh, an email copy of the letter from the Park Commission? I did. Have other members of the board seen that? Okay. So uh, Dr. Malik met with the Park Commission They've issued this letter dated July 27, outlining several stipulations which we would, we would agree would be incorporated into the decision, uh, assuming that, that the board acts favorably again this time. A few things we've learned along the way about this property, and that is the issue of traffic and blocking the entrance. Although that's really not before us tonight, we're adopting all of the things that we've done in the past when the board has acted uh, favorably. So there's, re I lose it right here. When we go to the planning board for site plan approval, we can work out the details of this do not block the box. But 
<clears throat> Mr. Theria has, um, from here to here, uh, requesting people that not to stop there or block that entrance and exit uh, while they're traveling down Pleasant Street. So um, that was one thing that I think was important and it was important in many of the other uh, decisions. So basically the hardship is interesting. It, uh, the ordinance was created after the, after the lot was created and the ordinance took away the use of the property. So you really couldn't use it anymore without relief. I think, I think the old building was there before the enactment of that ordinance. So that would have been grandfathered, but certainly these new, new buildings would not be. <clears throat> this building would be not part of it, part of the restriction. So the ordinance in and of itself is the hardship, takes away the use of the property. And the, and the Park Commission has agreed to a 10 foot setback, which they've done on at least two prior occasions. The other thing that we've done here is um, we've shown quite a bit of vegetation, not only along the park, <coughs> but between the property and these owners on Pennsylvania Avenue. There's a retaining wall here because the property drops off, but we would maintain all of that vegetation. Um, you know, the, the, the buildings really would look quite nice. This is a gateway into the city of Brockton. Uh, this would be something that would one uh, work within the ordinance itself, and that's what it was intended for. And um, I would respectfully request that you grant a variance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to give us a 10 foot vegetative setback with the uh, use of a lot of, I believe we're gonna use arborvitae along here. I think that's what the park commission wants. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, if this were, if this was granted, would your um, developer be willing to spruce up that entrance to DW Fields Park with the commission? You know, it's City? funny, that the answer is yes. Um, and I was fully expecting to see that in this letter from the Park Commission. And it needs a little work. And would you agree to do that? Yes, yeah. Just, you know, it's, uh, right. it's a presentation, like you said, um, that is the, one of the largest, well, if not the largest gateway into our city. Yeah. You know, Dr. Malik wants this place to look good. And, and if the property next door looks good too, that's, that's good for him. And we would Thank do that. You. Okay. So the petitioner is requesting relief from the side yard setback to the park and on the westerly side of the property line, you're requesting that we grant you relief. And the northerly side. Yeah, I'm just saying on the westerly side, you want relief to allow a 10 foot setback between. Between the park and the property. And the property, I would presume, <coughs> is the driveway that goes behind that building. Right. Okay. Now, on the north side and the back, what is the setback on the north side? We are asking the board to grant us a 10-foot setback on both the westerly and the northerly side. That doesn't show on this plan. It would appear on the north side there's a lot more green space than there is on the west side. Uh, it leads me to believe that you've got much more room to maneuver on the north side than you do on the west side. I don't see any numbers there.
full hand in the back. I thought we did. Um, that's about a 30-foot line. So I would, sit, I would stipulate that yeah, on the north side, the uh, vegetative area would be from this line of the parking lot back and that would all be veg vegetation, or at least as shown as vegetation. Um, and that's what the Park Commission agreed to. So you're requesting relief to allow 10 feet of setback on the west side and 30 feet of setback on the north side. I think that's 30 feet. Well, as shown uh, to the edge of the parking lot as shown on the plan. Yeah, and I don't know what that number is. The only concern I have here is that if we say that that is 30 feet that we're going to allow you and what looks like on this map is 50 feet, it's certainly going to be a different perspective when the thing is done. The stipulation would be that we're, as this would be part of the decision and we would maintain a vegetative green area. We won't go beyond that for the parking. So you're so telling us that on the north property line from the edge of where the cars are going to be parked to the edge of the property line at the park itself is 30 feet. It's approximately 30 feet. It looks to be in that. Could even be a little more. Yeah, I know. I just wish we had a number. Can we scale that? Give me a minute and we'll get that scaled. Council, in, in between, if I could just ask you a question. Yep. The, on the west side, where that vegetation is, it looks like you've got about a 14-foot road. You have parking spaces. And I know we're talking about the vegetation today, but with this vegetation in place, where a delivery is going to go to this building and uh, these different tenants? Because I'm, I'm just concerned you're trying to put a big truck down that road because you need that 10-foot of, of vegetation. And if there's cars parked there, they could literally block off that whole exit and back up the entire I, I just you know before, when you came before us before that's, my biggest that's 14 feet yeah 14 feet but you're not going to get another car around that probably if you have a big UPS truck or a big delivery truck going into that if we have cars parked as well you know when you drive behind a building typically you're not going to find a car back there that's they deliver through the front door. Well, yeah. it's a parking spot, yeah. so I would assume a car would be parked there. Mm -hmm. Can I take this down for a second? Yeah. Well, okay, but you, are your workers going to park out in front where the patients come in? Um, I, I'm not, th I'm, this is not a, a point of a, a argument. I guess my question is, it's a parking spot, so people will park there. It's not, I can't say people don't, you can't say people normally don't park behind a building, because I park wherever I can park my car. And that's not always the case. So we, if, if you're going to make a parking spot, I have to assume a car's going to park there. doesn't matter if it's behind the building, on top of the building, behind the building. You give extra spaces so you can remove the spaces. Too. Say it again. I think these are extra spaces anyway. So. Yeah, these were extra spaces if you want to eliminate them. So we don't know what the uses are going to be as we go forward, other than Dr. Malik. We know how many parking spaces we need for that. So what we would have to do on each one is to approach the building commissioner and discuss what the use is going to be, and that will dictate the number of parking spaces. If we need to, we might have to come in before the board again. But if that's a concern, if those parking spaces are a concern, we can eliminate them tonight. I, I think these are extra spaces anyways. They're extra spaces. So the stipulation would be that we'd eliminate all of the parking spaces shown on the proposed plan on the on the westerly building and to the western side of the building, the back side of the building. Okay. You still need site plan re uh, review, correct, with the planning board? Still, we'd still like the we'd still like the ten foot setback. Yeah. No, but I'm, my question is, you still need to go before the planning board. Oh yeah. If, if oh yeah. Site plan approval, absolutely. Yeah. Did we figure out what that is? We did. So that dash line, that setback line is a 25-foot line. Uh, I think that's what we would 
Well, we're starting. My name's Kevin Patton. I'm a principal at BKA Architects. And what we're struggling with a little bit is that there's a lot of grading that happens at the rear of the site. And we have a retaining wall that needs to be placed in here. And we don't want to plant on an excessive grade. So we would be asking for 25 feet um, to the rear property line. So that's our vegetative buffer would be 25 feet. To the retaining wall? To, to the stash line, that 25 foot line, oh. which is where his planting line is. 40, 40 feet is to the uh, curb line. Okay. So that's fair enough. So then to the rear, it would be 25 feet. So if that was granted 25 feet, why couldn't you move that back parking lot back to the 25 foot mark? I, I, well, as, sorry. Um, as I was trying to uh, explain earlier, is there's a lot of grade that happens in here. So the further we push the parking back, the taller the retaining wall gets mm -hmm. back here next to the, uh, the park. So we've been trying to pull the curb line uh, as far away from the property line as possible. Okay, you're telling us that, but what I'm saying is on the plan, there should be a indication of where, how close those cars are going to be parked to the park property line on the north side. All I'm saying is without a delineation there, that line can be moved anywhere we want to move it. If you want to bring in fill and do away with that depression up there, that would be an, an option of the construction of that place. It, it absolutely is, but the problem is, is that bringing in the fill is quite expensive. So we've been trying to let the whole site grade down as it goes to the back. In fact, the building will step down as we go to the rear of the site, uh, just in order to not bring in so much structural fill. Okay, so this relief that you're asking for on the west side is from 100 feet down to 50 feet with vegetated screening. Ten now feet. you're asking to go from 50 feet down to 10 feet. That's where we're at with this right now. That's yes. correct. Yes, and that's what the board has approved before. We, we did a lot of work on this piece of property up here because it is so unique. And the last time we were here on this property, we had a plan that everybody seemed to think worked very, very well. I will just say that the plan that's before us tonight totally disregards all the work that was done by this board, the petitioner, including you as the attorney, the neighbors, to make this such that it would work for a C2 at the time. So right now we're, we're asking for C5. So on the west side of the property, there is absolutely no provision here whatsoever for delivery trucks. You're telling us tonight that you will take those parking places out of there. But if anybody parks in those parking places and a truck pulls in behind that building to make a delivery, that 14 foot driveway is going to be totally jammed up. So, so we've agreed to around, take those parking spaces out. Anybody that comes around from the north side of the building will be trapped and can't get out of that back driveway. They get 14 feet. If a truck parks there, you're not going to get around that truck. A truck's eight, eight and a half feet wide. Right. But All right, so the I, majority I just of make, the people aren't going to be driving around that building. I, would, I just want to make a couple of statements that pertain to the setback from the park. And one of those I am very concerned about. My question also is on the 10 foot setback from the park, what type of edge stone is going to be placed along the property line to prevent anyone from this property from going onto the 10 foot setback? Well, there'd be curbing, but that's part of the site plan approval okay, process. Okay, good, that's, that's your answer you're gonna right. give me. All right. It would appear that what's before us tonight is a tenant space for Ace Dental. When you look at the whole totality of this, we're looking at 14 different occupants possibly in this building. This building can be broken up into 14 different occupancies here. We have no idea what the parking requirements are for those 14 occupants. That's exactly what I said earlier. Correct. The other thing that we were very concerned with on this property 
which relates to public safety is coming in this driveway. In the past, we had an agreement that all those parking places would be pulled back from Pleasant Street so that when a car pulled in, if somebody was trying to back out of a parking place, that car or the car behind them wouldn't get hung up out on Pleasant Street. Now, now this I, plan brings We've talked about places. that, and I, I, I think that where we agreed to pull those back is what you're seeing here. No, it's not. I have the original plan from the last time, and it's much different. Did you measure that? I, I got the plan right here. Okay. The other thing that I'm very concerned about relative to parking up here and setbacks, and I know that this will play into the overall movement of traffic on this property, is the proposed building number two. That sits in a C5 zone. It virtually takes up the entire parcel. The way the vehicles are going to be parked at that building, nobody can get near that building to make a delivery. As a truck pulls oh. in to make a delivery, they're going to have to park in the traffic lane, which is going to obst obstruct traffic coming in from Pleasant Street. Remember what the uses are. We're not talking about I that. I know that, but I think all of this plays into the setback that we're talking about here. When vehicles are moving around this property, that setback on the west side of the property becomes critical. The proposal that worked very well for this project had proposed building number two as a parking lot, which worked very well for the much smaller units that were originally planned up there, as well as for the neighbors. So when you look at the total build out of this piece of property and the movement of vehicles on this piece of property, if a lot of those vehicles have to come around from to the west side and they get jammed up in that driveway, the setback from the park becomes a critical issue. And the other thing I'll just mention, with all the work that we did, the dumpsters were put to the left corner of the property so they didn't involve any hardship for anybody. I'm very disappointed to see they've all been moved to the people's backyards. The Park Commission wanted us to move them. Amazing. So these people on Pennsylvania Avenue now are going to listen to dump trucks coming in at 6 o'clock in the morning, emptying dumpsters, and it's going to be within the setback of, of the park. So I, I just want to say that a lot of time was spent creating a parcel up here that seemed to work for everybody. Now what is here fits on a C5. I don't deny that. But the movement of vehicles, the layout of this property, I think, is going to create a problem. So the setback from the park becomes critical. If there is anything at all that obstructs the movement of vehicles on the west side of that building, no traffic is going to be able to get out of that side of the building. Yeah, well, if you... Assuming, and I, and I doubt that the deliveries would be back in the back, because the type of deliveries you're going to have are on a, on a, not a pallet, but they're going to be in a little wheeled thing like they do at my office. They show up and they walk in the door, the front door, and they make the delivery from WB Masons and whatever. Mailman, same thing. Nobody goes to the back door. And that's what you're going to see here because you're not going to get a lot of deliveries to a place like this. We don't know what's going in all those other occupancies. Mm -hmm. Well, all, all day long we could have delivery trucks coming in here, parking in it's the... Gotta, it's got to be a dentist, it's got to be a lawyer, an accountant. We get paper. A whole list. I don't disagree. No. whole list. And, and, and Dr. Malik gets a box of syringes, uh, or he gets some, you know, paper towel. You're not going to have... This isn't a place where you need to be concerned about deliveries in the back. It's not going to happen. The requirement is there has to be a delivery area. There is absolutely no delivery area in any of these plans. Well, we could make that a delivery area. We've, agre right. we've agreed to eliminate those spaces. If you want to call it a delivery area, it is. That's what it is. So that's my concern with the setback. You can add in so. all those spaces. In there. Hmm? You can add in all these spaces, the extra spaces. Yeah, we'll, we'll eliminate all of those, but he wants you to eliminate the building. Uh, where are we? 
questions from the, you're done? You're done on your presentation? Yep. Okay, good. Board, any questions from the board members? We'll continue that. Everybody's good? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Please come up to the podium and give your name. My name is Brenda Ibarra. We're from 15 Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, what number? 15 Pennsylvania Avenue. 15? Yes. And Could you just show us where that is? Now? It is right across next to the bench. Right yes. So, but we're still, he touched on a lot of the issues on the prior um, construction plan that they had proposed. At the end, it was agreed that it was always good to have an exit, entry and exit with the existing um, entry and exit that already exists in the lot. Um, the setbacks do make sense uh, this time. Not knowing what it's going to be in the building, I was happy when I heard it was him. I figured he was gonna make a building just like the one before, a couple of dentists there, but it's a much, it looks like a plaza actually. It doesn't look just like a, what it used to be there. So we go back to like the project being a little bit too big for the lot. Um, they're not asking for curb cuts on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is one of the biggest issues, but the traffic remains the same. Um, have asking for the variance on the park would give, will stay like that forever. So we don't, if we don't even know what the use is gonna be, how many parking lots, snow removal, all the stuff, I'm actually abutting the office and they just paved all the way to our property line and now we get flooded. So those are the reason why they have to, you have to have some space between neighbors, especially the park. Um, so that's one of the reasons um, our neighbor next door, it's also, the, it, she's not here. She said to speak in their favor and think she sent an email, but we're all about the same thing. It said the project, this is the actual use for the property, so we're not against that, but it's a little bit too big for the lot. Um, I think that's the issue now. Um, like he said, it used to be the parking on the right side on the small building. I was surprised to see that building there because I didn't think you could fit a, bit of a building there. Um, but that's, I mean, it, it's just not knowing who else is gonna go there or how many suites are gonna be because I think that's how it's gonna be portion out in suites, um, it, it makes a difference because it will also dictate how many people go there and the traffic that will generate. It's an office, so that's gonna be during daytime. But when you think about deliveries, you, ne you never know if you're gonna get a delivery in a van or a truck. I order stuff on W Mason, they're big trucks. Um, and they happen at different times. You can't, you can't tell the delivery company what vehicles to use to deliver whatever you order. So those are, you have to plan for the worst versus and hope for the best. Um, and that's one of the things that he's concerned and that's always been our concern in that. Um, it, I, that's, that's what we at Pennsylvania Avenue believe and it's, I'm glad to have you as a neighbor. Um, maybe it's just a little bit for the lot and hopefully it will work out but I think it needs a little bit more planning. Um, the lot, it's already there. There's a lot of stuff going out of the park. Um, we wanna keep it there because you don't wanna encroach on the park because once you scroll, once you agree to it, it's always gonna be encroached. Um, so, and once the building is there, that's gonna stay there. So that's, that's our point. Thank you. A comment Thank you. On that. Um, so for example, if this is a dentist office and they need to send something out to the lab and the lab is right here, nobody's coming and going. So it's, it's all gonna be related and it's not always gonna be patients. It's gonna be people that come to work and don't see anybody. And as I say, each and every time that we 
to get a tenant, we have to do an evaluation to see what the parking is, re is required. And, uh, you know, I, I think presently this works for this property. Okay, let's hold up on that. So, I didn't hear any opposition to granting setback from the park. That was more informational right. rather than opposition. All right, is there anyone else that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close that portion. Is there anyone here that wants to speak relative to any issues relative to the site? All right, I have a letter, a quick letter I'm going to read into uh, the minutes of the meeting, and it's from William Morgan, 14 Pennsylvania Avenue, which is a direct abutter. I am writing in regard to the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals on August 28th. 2023 pertaining to the petition of OMSI Properties LLC for a variance of vegetative screening for 609 627 Pleasant Street. I don't believe the variance should be granted. Brockton has zoning laws. When asking for relief from Article 2, Section 2724A, what is really being asked is for them, that property, to be allowed to break the law. This is legal if the board finds OMSI properties to meet four criteria in Section 2748. As none of the criteria can be met, I see no reason why the city would not expect long-standing laws to be followed. I have lived at 14 Pennsylvania Avenue for 32 years. Until 2015, when Mr. Hebshi sold the property of Mr. Cartwright, there was a functioning office building that followed the law and complied with all the Zone 5 building codes. It thrived for 60 years. This variance request now supposes that a new project can't do the same with no evidence to support it. Law-abiding citizens abide by the law. Whoever buys 609 627 Pleasant Street knowingly buys Zone 5 property that abuts a public park and is subject to setback laws. It is nonsense to assume that in the past few years the topography of the lot has changed or following the Zone 5 ordinance would pose some kind of hardship or that granting the variance would be a scar to DW Field Park or derogate Frederick Law Olmsted's intent to shield the park from city traffic and noise. We in the neighborhood ask that the existing laws be followed and variance be denied. All right, so he is referencing the setback request for the park. And keep in mind that what is before us tonight technically is relief from the 50-foot setback of this property from the park. That's where we're going with this. There is another letter here that came in from Tim Carpenter, superintendent of parks. Members of the Zoning Board, let it be known that the representative for the above-named project did appear before the City of Rockton Park Commission at the meeting of June 8, 2023. At said meeting, the developer requested the support of the Park Commission for relief from the required vegetative buffer from DW Field Park on the western and northern sides of the property. The Park Commission voted unanimously, four to nothing, to support a waiver of the vegetative buffer giving the following stipulations. One, the proposed location of the dumpster enclosure will be moved from the western side of the property to the easternmost side. Two, the dumpster enclosure will be in comprised of mini mesh fencing fabric with opening no larger than one and a half inches in size. Three, proposed vegetative screen will consist of primarily evergreen species of trees. Proprietor agrees to place cameras on the western side of the building and further agrees to allow access to any camera footage that may aid the city with any and all investigations into illegal activity in the proximity of DW Field Park. Proprietor also agrees to keep and maintain property in a neat, clean, and orderly fashion and further agrees to remove any and all trash or litter in proximity to the property, even if that trash or litter is located within DW Field Park and in close proximity to property located at 627 Pleasant Street. Should the Zoning Board have any further information, please contact the Park Department. Thank you for your attention. So this letter verifies the fact that the petitioner appeared before the Park Commissioners and they voted four to nothing in favor of allowing a relief from the 50-foot setback back to the 10-foot. I take that's what that letter is saying with the stipulations that you heard within that letter. I think I heard the petitioner earlier mention that virtually all of the things that were discuss, discussed in prior cases relative to access to this property uh, is included within the petition that's before us tonight. And one of the petitions, one of the requests of the petition was to stripe the street for don't block the box. 
and you're telling us tonight that you're agreeing that also. The driveway that comes out of the west side of the property would be a right turn only, so that you can only go west coming out of the property. Uh, there is a whole list under C5 that's allowed to go onto this property, so as far as the board is concerned, that list is allowable occupants of this property. And if they conform to the C5, then they are in compliance with zoning. The principal problem that's before us tonight is do we think that that 10-foot setback from the park is appropriate for what they want to develop? We have a letter from the park department who is the principal of butter on two sides of this that has no opposition as long as they conform to the requirements that we saw in the letter. Um, so I just want to make sure that we as a board understand that everything else that has come before the board relative to this piece of property has been extinguished. There are no lawsuits that are currently pertaining to this piece of property. All that stuff is gone. All, it's all gone, and uh, the last variance that was allowed has expired. Correct. I just want to make sure we all understand this is a very yeah. fresh case, and all the other cases that came before us relative to this site are gone. So, uh, with that, um, I am disappointed that pulling into this driveway off of Pleasant Street, we're immediately right into parking places. I think that's going to cause a problem. Um, but maybe at planning, that can be addressed. Uh, our concern there was if a car pulled in and stopped for any reason, another car behind them would be hung up out on Pleasant Street. And the thought was to move the traffic in on the property. And I think at the time the petition agreed that was the right thing to do. Right, I remember that. And um, there were, it were right at the entrance and, and you were concerned about that. And I quite frankly thought we were far enough back that took that into consideration. Although I, I will say I didn't take the two plans. And yeah, I did take the other plan. The other plan definitely shows green space further back, maybe uh, three spots back. That. We can work that out with the planning board. I, I think that's going to be paramount to do that. So, is there any elected official that wants to be heard on this issue? We had no letters from any elected official? Nope. Nobody? Okay, good. So I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. I'm now going to open it up to discussion among the board members. Board members. Well, I, I certainly think it has a couple of things to be ironed out, but again, it will see um, another planning stage, which it does need. Um, having stopped at the Parks Department is obviously takes, you know, we've had cases on the same lot that, you know, you hadn't done that yet, and that certainly helps. Um, I think some of these issues can be, men, you know, ironed out in the next stage, so. I would be concerned in planning that the question that I brought up about an edge stone on the back of that building along the property of the park, if there is no edge stone there, over a period of time, vehicles are going to start intruding into that property that belongs to the park. I think there has to be some type of a curb that would prevent anybody from going into that 10-foot setback. I don't know if there's a curb there or not, Councillor, but I think there should be. Yeah, it, it can't be like a, a Cape Cod berm. Yeah. We got to make sure that if we're going to preserve the 10 foot setback of that park, that nobody's going to drive a vehicle in there. I would hope that in planning that will get addressed. So it comes down to do we want to grant them relief so that they can have relief from the setback? And in the side, west side, we are granting you if this is approved, is 10 feet of setback, and in the back, no less than 30 feet. Is that what the agreement is? Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to grant with the stipulation to remove the parking spaces on the west side of the building and to do the sprucing up of the entrance to the park. Second. 
and the other public safety issues that were addressed that, that I brought up about marking the street, don't block the box, that's back in this thing? It's there. It's on that plan. Yes, sir. And, well, we didn't talk about it. And coming out from behind the building, only a right-hand turn, no left turn. Okay. Those are those, fine. Those are critical the last time uh, we were Absolutely. Up. Yeah. yeah. Can't go left anyway. Good luck. So, um, what was the stipulation again? Remove parking spaces on the west side, make it delivery. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the don't block the box and the right turn only on the back, and also to the stipulation is to spruce up the park entrance that uh, the owner agreed to do. Okay, that was in the letter from the park, park commissioner. All right, so with those stipulations, have we got a motion? We did. A motion properly motion. seconded. Chief. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to grant with those stipulations. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Lanis. Yes. Chief Nadelli. Yes. Mr. Sweeney. Yes. Ms. Screenberry. Yes. Chair Galligan. No. Mr. Chair, that's four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The vote is four in the affirmative, one in the negative. The petition Good. is granted. Yeah. Good luck. It's a four to one night tonight. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> You have the letter from our commissioner. And you got the letter from Morgan. I'm going to keep all that with us. This is just a proposal. How long is the Boys and Girls Club been in class? We're going to take a five minute recess. You want to give these out to the board members? What you're receiving is a revision to the original plan. It's a slight revision, but I think it's important that we take a look at it. You know,
going to reconvene the hearing for the board. Uh, the next petition is 2337, the petition of the Boys and Girls Club of Metro South Incorporated, 19 Court Street, second floor, Taunton, Mass, for a special permit seeking relief from Article 4, Section 2736, Section 4, Section 5, and Section 6 to allow improvements in a flood zone, Article 3, Section 2724-2A, for a variance for relief from screening when abutting a playground. Article 3, Section 2729, seeking from the front frontage side rear yard setbacks and relief from parking in an R3 zone located at plot 71-1 Belmont Street, which is a portion of Eldon B. Keith Field. Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, Mr. Clerk, Attorney John McCluskey representing the Boys and Girls Club of Metro South Inc. Um, with me this evening is Derek Heim, who's the CEO of the Attorney, if you could use counselor. I'm always reminded of people to do that, but thank you. Dave LaPointe, uh, land surveyor, and uh, oh my God. Dave Siebert uh, from BKA. Um, we're asking for a couple of things tonight, and then let me give you a, just an overview of what's going on here. So there's a few different plans that you're looking at. First off, this is what the Boys and Girls Club would like to build because they have a waiting list of 300 kids that can't get services. And this will be an educational and athletic facility located on, on what is part of the Eldon B. Keith Field. The Eldon B. Keith Field is owned by the city of Brockton, managed by the school department. So you can only imagine jumping around to the different boards that we've been doing for the past couple of years. I've been before the city council. Derek has been before the school committee many times. Um, and the city council voted on an agreement which is part of the package called an exclusive negotiating agreement. Under that exclusive negotiating agreement, we have 150 days to sort of get things in order and then go to a, what we would call a purchase and sale agreement and then do a closing. Mm. The Eldon B. Keith Field right now is this outline, what you see all through here. We want to buy from the city this portion and make it part of the, the campus, if you will, of the Boys and Girls Club, and their main building right now is here. The Boys and Girls Club has virtually no parking. They have a year-to-year -year lease with the church on the corner, and uh, they have a couple of parking spots here because there's an easement that goes by the by the um, church property. The new property, this building, would be placed right here on the, on the um, what is now part of the field. What's not shown here, uh, yes it is, there's a, there's a culvert uh, which collapsed across the street on West Elm Street a year or two ago, uh, but the culvert goes underground and is, uh, carries water from the Salisbury, or two, I guess, the Salisbury River. Um, the um, Ardone School is here. They have their parking. And if you look at what we've got here, this property has virtually, this proposed lot has virtually no frontage. But we want to work out an easement with the school department and the city which is a one, I, I submitted uh, a, a two, I think I showed you two easements, uh, which we are not gonna go forward with. The new easement is now from West Elm through the parking lot, would allow buses to come in, uh, and these would be the, uh, in one way, this is, these are the columns that you presently see on the field, uh, abutting the field, um, that were erected many, many years ago. I think the, transfer to the city occurred around in the early 1900s. I don't know exactly what year. But in any event, there would be one-way traffic 
going from West Elm Street, buses dropping off children, parking spaces, I believe there's 62 parking spaces proposed. Obviously none of the children drive, it just would be employees and parents coming and going. And the exit would go out through the Arnone School parking lot and onto Belmont Street. We wanted to go this way because of the new public safety facility which is up here and if anything happened at the site, there'd be immediate and quick access right to the property. Um, the floodplain area that we're asking for relief for is down this way. There's that little park on the corner of um, Belmont and Warren and uh, part of the river is open in through here and uh, that's why we need to get relief. We don't believe actually that the elevations are within the flood zone, but we just recently put this property under uh, the initial agreement and what we'd be doing at some point would be asking for the flood zone to be modified once we submit the elevations to the FEMA people. And that, that's a process. The other process is that we'd be asking to subdivide this land, which is registered land. It's in the land, came out of the land court. You can't just go to the planning board, do a, a plan and record it. You have to go and prepare your plan and that's what Dave LaPointe's gonna be doing, working out a schedule of all the meets and bounds and putting them in a book for the land court engineers. You then submit that, a couple of months later, unless they have some changes, they tell you, okay, you're good to go initially. Then what happens is that the plan, and, and you're allowed to close on what they call a skeleton deed. So it's a deed that refers to a plan that's not on record. I did one, I'm gonna say it's five years ago. It still hasn't come out of the land court, but we did a closing. It, it, they just, they're so backed up, it's unbelievable. Um, so we could, and the, and the city is working that into our purchase and sale agreement. I talked with Megan Bridges yesterday about that and the process and how we go about it. So we'll be doing the engineering, but the city actually is the one that submits the plan to the land court for approval. And actually that has to, it's not only this lot, but it's all of this, because this is a new lot, the, the field. Um, in, the, uh, in our petition this evening, there's uh, two letters from uh, attorney Francis Vale Jr., father to Christopher, um, but Frank is an um, a environmental engineer and, and involved in things like this all the time, and he gave two written opinions that what we're planning to do here would not at all be adversely affected by the uh, designation that it has uh, in the, as a flood zone. The other thing, which is a favorite topic tonight, is the vegetative wetland, uh, vegetative uh, bordering um, area next to a park, because that's what that statu that ordinance is about. We don't wanna have any setback here. We wanna be able to have, you know, access to the field, and we're, we're and, and the city, you know, is, is in favor of that. Um, this field, we hope that at some point there's gonna be some money to improve because it needs some work. Um, but that's not part of our discussion this evening and, or nor with the city for, for the purchase of this. So we're asking that when this lot is created, we not be required to have uh, vegetative, any kind of uh, vegetative buffer. There will probably be a curb and I can't tell if it shows there or not, but there would likely be some type of a curb to prevent cars from driving onto the field. So um, the hardship uh, is that, oh, we're only looking for dimensional relief. So under the, this is in an R3 zone. R3 zone would require us to get a variance for the use but this is a 501c3 nonprofit educational use. So the use is ex exempt from zoning. Uh, we can do a kind of a uh, use there. That's called the Dover Amendment. Um, the land, the, the, the square footage of the, of the 
lot is going to be 47,170 square feet. Uh, I mentioned the flood zone, unusual soil conditions and topography. This is certainly going to be an unusual shaped lot. Uh, the topography is affected by that culvert that, that goes under, under the field and I think through the parking area of this property. I don't think that's where it goes. Uh, it would not obviously be anywhere near this uh, new proposed building. Have they completed uh, the work looking at this? Okay, so we've had people go into the culvert to examine it, talk about and, and analyze its structural integrity, et cetera. And, uh, and I'm sure that at the end of the day, if we're parking on top of it over here, it's going to pass muster from that perspective, from that engineering perspective. Um, so we're looking for relief from setbacks, very minimal here and here, uh, keeping in mind that this property is Boys and Girls Club property, so it would be sort of part of the, of the whole campus. At some point, we're discussing how to possibly merge the two. The Boys and Girls Club property is re uh, recorded land. This is registered land, so you can't put them together without probably what would happen is we'd, we'd go to the land court and have this eventually removed from the registered land designation and it would become recorded land. Then you could do a plan showing the whole thing. But that's, that's down the road and we're still talking about it. So um, we're asking for a special permit on the flood zone issue and we're asking for a variance um, on the setback and dimensional requirements and we're asking for parking relief under um, Article 9, Section 2754, Off-Street Parking, uh, that which is under the residential use. Uh, we, uh, we show 62 spaces, which we think is plenty of parking for our needs. The other thing that this would do, right now, pick up and drop off, as I understand it, is on Warren Ave, at least some of it. Do they also do come into the parking lot? And they also come into the parking lot, but um, it'd be much safer, easier to have pick up and drop off on the property within our own boundaries and in that configuration. Uh, let's see. So the special permit standards is, is basically the use would be of such location, size, and character that it will be in harmony with the appropriate and orderly development of the zone and not detrimental to the existing neighborhood. This downtown Brockton, we need to have a, another building like this to take care of these kids. There's lots of great after school programs, um, educational programs, athletic programs. And as I say, the, the wait list is over 300. So it really needs to happen. I'd say that's the end of my presentation. I have a question. Is, there, is the culvert the reason why the building wasn't built right next to the park in the parking lot in between it? Like over where your parking well, is now? Well, the culvert goes right here. And so obviously we're not gonna build anywhere near that. Yeah, I, I, my only reason is because if, we, if you guys, if they're gonna use the park and this is just a, kids running through the parking lot to get to the park, it's not really a, really that, like it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, you're putting the kids safety at risk. If you put the parking on the other side of the building, move the building over, if the culvert's not there anyways. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I, they, they built it so up close to the church. Was there any thought of building it more towards the field? So um, now the kids come out of the building to use the field and then they're right on the field. They're not running through a parking lot to get there. And there's a lot of young kids in that building. I've been there much You're suggesting times. moving this building? Yeah, that's- Which I just, way? Towards the field. Towards the field and putting the parking on the um, other side. I just was curious what the thought process was, but where that was placed. Well, one, I'll tell you that we've been working on this plan with the city for two years or more. So it's our fault. And, and if we start going and changing this at this point, it's oh. gonna, yeah. It's that's, gonna not, be. that's not what I'm asking. I just was asking what the thought yeah. process was, because it doesn't make a lot of sense to have kids walking through a playground, walking through a parking lot to get to a play, to a field. 
So Derek Heim, President and CEO of Boys and Girls Club of Metro South. When we designed this plan, we thought of all of those things, I can assure you. Part of the issue that has become sort of the massive issue of this is how to get to the site. So to avoid further curb cuts and everything coming in off of West Elm, we were trying to use the natural entrance that was already created to that property. With that said, the school committee has control over this site and there's been lots of discussions of what they'd like to see. This was the most recent rendition that the school committee got their head around and felt was the best entrance and exit to the property. Okay, I just, it, safety wise, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's besides the point. But. So the question I have, Sorry. which begs me to believe, there's not gonna be a fence, you don't wanna put trees there, you're asking for that to kind of be pushed. So is it gonna be a fencing or a lock gate or something? Sure, so we've proposed in the plan, uh, most recently to the school committee, fencing between the curb of the parking lot mm -hmm. and the proposed field. Okay. So yes, fencing to protect people coming mm -hmm. in and out of our parking lot, going to the field. So that was presented to the school committee in this most recent rendition. Okay. And we're still in discussion with the school committee on the actual entranceway. <coughs> yeah. uh, it's not etched in stone yet. They have not granted the easement as of today. Their next meeting is scheduled, I believe, in a week and a half. We have requested to be on that agenda to approve this. We did have a site meeting on site with all the school committee members, and this is what came out of that site visit and meeting. The on site. I had a, a question on the entranceway that comes in off of West Elm Street. I, I think the original plan was to have that the only entrance and exit coming out of this property. And the, the latest plan that has been given us tonight is a modification to that, which would put the road out to the unknown school, okay? which I think is a, a smart thing to do so that you don't create a dead end at that parking lot. Uh, is there any reason why you couldn't make the entranceway from West Elm Street two directions? Does it have to be one way? Could it be wide enough? It appears as though those pillars are plenty wide enough to allow in and out on West Elm Street and only out to Belmont. Can you? You are correct. So our engineers designed that original plan with entrance and exit off of West Elm. It was the discretion of the school committee that they did not want to see that as two-way traffic to protect the integrity of the pillars, the eagles, and the placking that is on those pillars. They're concerned the traffic will be too tight, someone could potentially hit them, and there's a lot of historical significance in those. Uh, to the Keith family, and uh, it's the gift they made to the city years ago. So what we're considering tonight then for access to this property is the one-way entrance from West Elm and the one-way discharge through the schoolyard out to Belmont Street. Yes, and we're not being presumptuous that the this entrance into the Arnone parking lot was our idea. That was the idea of the school committee superintendent and uh, assistant superintendent. So there'll also be a way to get into this property from Warren Avenue through that right of way next to the Boys and Girls Club now? Currently, there's an entrance off of Warren Avenue. If you're aware, they are changing the tra traffic patterns on Warren Avenue. We've been in discussions both with the mayor and the city planner in regards to that. Part of the issue in front of our building, and this has been going on for years, is parents don't abide by pulling into the lot. They park on Warren Avenue, stack cars, and it becomes a challenge getting down Warren Avenue. As much education as we do with parents, that is a challenge that we've been dealing with for years. We're excited about the two-way traffic on Warren Avenue because we, went, we believe you won't be able to pull over because you will be blocking traffic at that point. Uh, with that said, to answer your question, there, I'm assuming based on what the city is going to do, and again, assuming, you'll only be able to go right out of our parking lot once that two-way traffic is done because I don't believe they're gonna put a traffic signal at the end of that parking lot. So 
in theory, I would assume it's going to be a right turn only out of that lot. At Belmont Street, right? At Warren Avenue. At Warren Avenue. So that was my question. The access road from the new building along the north side of the current armory to West Elm Street, that's going to stay? That is correct. And you can go either direction on that one? That has not been determined based on elevations, whether we can get a cut through through there, through where the our back of our current armory building is up into this new space. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to digest here, and uh, personally, I think having that extra driveway going out to Belmont Street is a smart thing to do. At least you'll have two ways to get in and out of this place in case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tight, I think, but... It is. And if there's a fence, as was discussed along the property that the school department is talking about, that would preclude kids from running between cars mm -hmm. into the parking lot. You're going to funnel all these kids into right. pretty much one location. Yeah, makes sense. All right, board members, any other questions? And this project is also uh, subject to site plan review from the planning oh, board. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. We're all set. Good. I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in favor? Please come up and give your name to the clerk. Uh, Matthew Stanton, 160 Tribu Street. I don't know all the intricacies. Um, I'll leave that up to you guys, but I, uh, I do like the, uh, the building, and it's much needed in the city um, for the kids. Um, so I'll leave it up to you, but I do support it. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to speak in favor? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. Is there anyone here that has any questions relative to the issues discussed? Seeing none, I'll close that portion of the hearing. Is there any elected official that wants to be heard on the issue? I have, bear with me. I have an email that was sent to me from uh, Jeff Thompson, Councilor of Ward 5, and he requested that I read this into the record. Mr. Chairman, please accept this email as my support for the petition of the Boys and Girls Club for their requested variances. I have spearheaded the effort on the City Council to declare the land on Keith Field surplus for the expansion of the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club provides meals, tutoring, sports, and mentorship that is vital to the success of Brockton's children. Over 50% of the boys and girls who participate in the club are Ward 2 and Ward 5 children. The expansion of the club will serve hundreds of more Brockton families. The Brockton City Council unanimously supported the expansion of the club. I respectfully request the ZBA grant all variances sought by the club. Thank you, Jeffrey Thompson, Ward 5 City Council. So that has been read into the record. Is there any other elected official who wants to be heard on the issue? Seeing none, I'm going to close that portion of the hearing. That completes the public discussion of the issue. I will now open it up for discussion among board members. Board so members. Wonderful project um, for, the, for the city. Uh, I just wish we could stipulate maybe getting a couple of passes with Mac Jones during <laughs> his next visit, but I don't, I don't think that would stick. But it does have another step to go with the planning board um, if there are any uh, issues to iron out. But... Um, the upside of this project with everything that's coming in the neighborhood and it'll be close to, to this guy over here uh, in the police department. Um, great, great project. I think they've demonstrated a hardship on the variances and a, and a reason for the special permits. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to grant. Second. There were no stipulations on this, was there? No. Motion has been made and seconded to grant. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Lamus? Yes. Chief Nardelli? Yes. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. Ms. Greenberry? Yes. Chair Galligan? Yes. Mr. Chair, that's five in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Thank you. The vote is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. The petition is granted.
prior to our leaving tonight's meeting, it is our annual duty under the rules and regulations of the Zoning Board of Appeals to designate a chairperson for the coming year. In conformance with that, the chair will open up to the board nominations for chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the upcoming year. I nominate Ken Galligan. I second. I motion to conclude nominations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I second the, the closing. All right, a motion has been made to close the nominations by a hand vote. Are we in agreement? Yeah. Yes. Okay. There has been one nomination made. When the clerk calls your name, please name the person that you are voting for. Mr. Lanis. Ken Galligan. Ms. Greenberry. Ken Galligan. Chief Nadelli. Ken Galligan. Mr. Sweeney. Ken Galligan. Ken Galligan. Ken Galligan. <laughs> That's five. Five in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Five in the affirmative, none in the negative. Your chairperson for the upcoming year will be member Galligan. Now, in addition to that, we will now have an election to elect a vice chairman for the Zoning Board of Appeals who will act in the absence of the chairperson. The chair will now open up nominations for vice chair. A motion to nominate Fire Chief Brian Nardelli. I second that. Motion has been made and seconded for a Motion chief. to close nominations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Motion to close down the end. All right, and so mm -hmm. motion is made to nominate Fire Chief Nardelli and nominations, a motion is made to close the nominations. All those in favor of closing the nominations? Hand vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Lanis. Fire Chief Nardelli. Ms. Greenberry. Fire Chief Nardelli. Fire Chief Nardelli. Me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sweeney. Fire Chief Nardelli. Uh, Chair Galligan. Fire Chief Nardelli. Mr. Chair, that's five in the affirmative, zero in the negative. All right, the vote is five in the affirmative, none in the negative. Fire Chief Nardelli is the vice chair for the upcoming year. Uh, the chair will direct the secretary to put a letter together to the mayor indicating that we held an election this evening and the votes were Galligan as chair and Nadelli as vice chair. With that, if we have no further business to come before the board, I would entertain a motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Motion's been made and second adjourn. We are adjourned.